Well, here we are uh, at the painting stage, and this is where it gets to be fun. We've made our sketch, we have a background. Now we have to think carefully about how we're going to go about <coughs> painting our painting today. Um, the beauty of this painting is that it's like a wonderful jewel embedded in a setting, and the setting is really important for <coughs> making the jewel stand out how to do that effectively. Um, we're going to paint in series, we're going to paint the greys, uh, sorry, the blues, then the greys. Then you notice there are two tones here of green, kind of a distant green, and then a, a nearer, more yellow green. We're going to use a variety of colors, all our colors in fact, including yellow ochre. And then we're going to do the main building and then in the, then the foreground. That's our sequence. So let's begin. You'll notice that it's best to lay out your colors <clears throat> on the side of your palette in the same sequence as your color chart. Yellow, lemon yellow, yellow ochre, permanent rose, burnt umber, ultramarine blue, and then white, <coughs> a big glob of white. Um, First we're going to do the sky, so again this is super helpful to recognize which colors you want, so we're doing a very plain, straightforward <coughs> mixture of blue and white, and I did it in the wrong sequence, I almost always add white first and then slowly change it. Next we're going to look at the greys. You'll notice that there's a range, quite a range of colors in there. It's broken color, not one color. And also it's far away, so it's thinned out. It's pale in color. Don't make it too strong or it'll stand out and overpower. So a nice range of greys <coughs> for the background. and. Start with a kind of even amount of each, see what you get. It's a nice color. Mix another one with a slight imbalance going the other way. One with a bit more balance towards the blue. And then just slowly, it's the reverse of before, you're slowly adding the white to see what colors you get. Alright, so our next part of our blocking in is going to be here. And you see it's quite bluish green and not very, it's not a bright green. So yellow ochre is the best, yellow ochre and uh, ultramarine blue is a, is a lovely combo. And then you'll see how the green switches to a much brighter, we can use uh, lemon yellow for, for that second phase. So let's mix up some yellow ochre. Watch how I do this. You want a big, again, generous helping 
start with just a little bit and slowly add your blue. So that's your mother load. <clears throat> and now you're going to take some satellites and make a variety of different greens for that background. So there's one, <coughs> which is quite close to what we're going. We, read a, we also need a really dark one. Um, So you'll notice that the next ridge forward is following our rules. In the back is more blue, <clears throat> in the foreground is warm, warm is yellow or red, in this case yellow. So what we need to do is brighten the colors of the green to make this ridge slowly fades out behind the mask. So to do that we need to pick up lemon yellow and invigorate some of the existing colors with that yellow. Just start slowly with changing the warmth of the greens. Probably not adding any more blue. Just slowly altering
now we're going to have some fun. Uh, cost a hundred and around 120 million US dollars to build the Faisal Mosque. It was the architect was Turkish by international competition. It's supposed to kind of look like a Bedouin tent. Uh, the minarets are in the range of 80 meters high. You can seat 300,000 people. Amazing structure. Um, let's have a look at it. Again, before you paint, every time you need to think about how you're going to construct what's happening. First of all, let's talk about the light. The light's coming from the left, so there's sh three main shades here. There's a shadow color, there's a slight shadow color, um, because it's slightly turned, it's not fully in the sunlight, and then full sunlight. So you need at least three shades of white and gray to do justice. So obviously the base the base color is white, you need a generous amount of the white. And divide that up into three groups, you need a nice brilliant in the sunlight white. Then you need some kind of a middle tone. Often you can pick up some of the stuff that's around that you've been using. If not, a little bit of red, a little bit of blue, a little bit of lemon yellow. Just a very small change will make a huge difference in the overall. And then you need that shadowy color <coughs> on the right hand side of the mask. And it's the balance between these colors that makes your whole construction.
So, we just have the foreground left. <clears throat> to catch the foreground, it's important just to look at the shadows. And you'll see where the shadows run. They're running uh, to the right of everything. And it's very, very helpful to put the shadows in much darker than you think you need. So, along the left side of the path, along here, to the right side here, big globs of shadow. Uh, if you don't do that, it's going to look quite weird later on and it won't balance. That road leading into the masjid is something we probably want to deal with. I feel like it, if you look at it, it's a purpley gray. And I'm going to take some of this color, maybe a bit too much, and then gray it down, see what it, see what it looks like. As I'm looking at this, I realize I made a serious mistake in the minaret. Look, this minaret is behind, and I've painted it in front. The great thing about it, see, see what I mean? It should be behind. I wasn't paying attention. The great thing about oils is easy to fix. <clears throat> ah, yeah. <laughs> that looks a lot better. Uh, I rather like that color too. One of the beautiful parts of this painting uh, is the bright orangey autumnal foliage. And the reason it pops out is because of the background, the background of pines. So let's throw the pines in there. Remember, they're, see how much darker they are than the background? So we need them dark, nice bright colors. Another trick you can do that helps you with pines is because there's a lot of vertical in them. You can add little vertical marks with your dark. It just gives them that piney feeling, whatever that, that is. Now for those beautiful autumnal variety of different reds and yellows. This is what's going to make the painting really hum. And feel free to use your imagination. You don't have to slavishly follow exactly what is in the picture. Um, so how are we going to get these reds? There's lots of different ways to do them. The base of them is all rose, the red color. Rose can be added with lemon yellow to be very bright, with yellow ochre to be middle, and with burnt umber to be dark. So we're going to play with the, the rose. this stage I'll always go back and look at my color chart. This is the color I'm looking for. 
<clears throat> the rose and the lemon yellow. That's missing. Um, so I added a bit more yellow to my palette. Maybe it's mostly yellow, we'll see. It's still not, I'm still not happy, it's still not light enough. And I, I could dilute it with white, but I don't want to do that too much. It'll lose the intensity. Again, I haven't really got that nice, uh, it's getting there now. So it's just a tiny bit of the red. Red is a bit like blue, it can overpower everything. So I think I have enough color uh, to attempt the next stage. When you do a signature, it helps if you use your smallest brush with a bit of uh, your solvent. Just practice it on your palette and see if you can get a point. Use a color that is already in use in the picture. And come in a little bit because if you frame it, it'll disappear. Uh, not too much contrast. Keep on picking up. Sometimes you'll only get one or two strokes. With each brush. There you have it. You have finished your painting well done.